Hello guys, welcome back to another video and today we're working question 7 from the June 2018 Mathematics Paper 2. So let's go. So question 7 says a sequence of figures is made from squares of unit length. The first three figures in the sequence are shown below. Part A says draw the figure 4 of the sequence. So what we realize is that each time figure 1 had a three squares. Figure two, now had five. So now an additional two squares was added at the end here. So these two squares. Figure three have seven, which were an additional two squares is added at the end here. So what we realize is that each time going up, each upcoming figure, two squares are added. So therefore we know that for figure four, it would be similar to figure three with an additional two squares being attached. Here. So therefore, the fourth figure will look something like this and the nine squares. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So based on the sequence before, we knew that figure four will have nine squares and this will be our figure four. Parbino says, study the pattern of figures in each row of table two. Each row relates to one of the figures in the sequence, which was on the previous slide. So it said some rows have been included in the table and we're asked to complete rows numbered one, two, and three. So what we know is that they gave us the figure, the number of squares in the figure, which we kind of got an idea of just now, and they also now included the parameter of the figure. So what we are first going to do, what I encourage students to do is to first try and decide what the formula is that is being used for each column. So in this case, the formula for the number of squares and the parameter. Once you figure out what the formula is, then you can solve any question that is asked by the examiner. So first we're going to look at finding the formula for the number of squares. So what we realize is that there's an increase of two each time. So because we know that there's an increase of two, what we're going to do is to multiply n, which in this case is the figure, the figure numbers, we're going to multiply n by two to get two n, whereas I stated n is the figure, and then we test the formula. If it works, then fine. If it doesn't, it means that another operation needs to be performed, which is either addition or subtraction. So when we do two n, when we do two multiply by one, we get two. When we do two multiply by two, which is figure two, we get four. When we do two multiply by three, we get six. So what we realize is that we're always short by one. So for figure one, it, the actual number of squares is three, but we got two. For figure two, the actual number of squares is five, but we got four. For figure three, the actual number of squares is six, but we got seven. So therefore, we're always short by one. So what we can then say is that if we add one to our equation, we can now always determine the number of squares. So if we say two multiply by n plus one, so if we say two times one is two plus one, we get three which gives us the actual number of squares. If we say two times two plus one, we actually get five, which is the actual number of squares. Two times three, six plus one, we get the actual number of squares here, which is seven. So we now know our formula is correct. So we can go ahead and determine any number of squares in figure S that the examiner choose to ask us. So now to solve part one for the number of squares in figure S, it will be 2n, which our n now is 4, so it will be 2 multiplied by 4 plus 1, and that will give us 9, which we also knew from the previous question before as we were asked to draw figure 4. So now to solve or find rather the formula for the parameter, what we know is that there's an increase of four each time. So eight to 12, there's a difference of four. 12 to 16, there's a difference of four. So what we're going to do again is the same thing. We're going to multiply our n 
by four and then test our formula. If it works, then good. If it doesn't, then we know that something additional needs to be done. So when we do four times one, we get four. Four times two, we get eight. Four times figure three, we get 12. So what we realize is that each time we're short by a consistent number of four. So therefore, if we do now 4n plus four and then test our formula, then we, and once it is correct, we know that this is now our correct formula that should be used for this particular column. So if we do four times one plus four, indeed we get eight, four times n, which is now figure two, four times two plus four, indeed we get 12, and the same thing for figure three, and we got 16. So we now know that our formula is correct, and we now know what our general formula for the parameter of figure is. So now to solve part one for the parameter figure, it will be four multiplied by four plus four. So four multiplied by four is 16 plus four, will give us 20. So therefore our parameter for figure four will be 20. So now to solve part two. So for part two, we know that our general formula for the number of squares was two n plus one is equal to the number of squares. This time they gave us the number of squares. So therefore what we're doing is to now try and solve for n. So therefore it will be two multiplied by n plus one is give us 43. So two n is equal to 43 minus one as this one was adding here. So when it comes across, it will be subtracting. So 43 minus one will give us 42 and therefore two n is equal to 42. Now to solve for n, this two was multiplying here. So when it comes across, it will be dividing. So what we'll have is n is equal to 42 divided by two and therefore n is equal to 21. We can now even test this by putting it in our formula. So if we say 2 multiplied by 21, that will give us 42 plus 1, and that indeed will give us 43. And that is how we know that our answer for n for part 2 is correct. After doing that, we can now go ahead and solve for the parameter. And remember, our formula for parameter was 4n multiplied, 4 multiplied by n plus 4. So we now know the value for n, which is 21. So it is 4 multiplied by 21 to give us 84 plus 4, and that will give us 88. So our parameter for figure, four, figure 21 will be 88. So part three now asks us to solve the N. So usually what I tell persons, which is the case, whenever you see N, what it is asking you for is a general formula. We'd have already solved this from the start of the question. So therefore we'd have already solved a part of the question before it was even asked because we're that brilliant. So therefore, Anywhere we see n, it is always asking for the general formula, which we already solved. So for the number of squares, it is 2n plus 1. And for the parameter, it is 4n plus 4. And now putting in, we're now filling out the, the table completely. So part one was 9 for the number of squares the parameter was 20 for part two the figure was 21 and the parameter was 83 and now we have our complete table and we get our entire six marks so this now says determine the relationship between the number of squares s and the parameter p of a figure So what we realize is that when we multiply s by two, then add two, we always get the parameter. So if we do two multiply by three, we get six plus two and we get eight. Then we multiply five by 
2, we get 10 plus 2, and that will give us 12. So that is the relationship between the number of squares and the perimeter of a figure. So the relationship that exists is 2s, which is 2 multiplied by the number of squares in the figure, plus 2 will always give us the perimeter. So that is the relationship that exists between the perimeter and the number of squares. So even if we do two multiply by seven, that will give us 14 plus two, that will give us 16. And if you remember the perimeter here was 88, if we do two, two multiply by 43, we get 86 plus two, and that will give us 88. And that is how we know that our relationship that we have formulated, formulated is correct. And that is the end of question seven and we'll see you in question eight.